My name is Sherry Murphy. I am a historic cook and a member of CHC, Culinary Historians of Canada. My favorite food as a child, as far as I can remember, is my mom used to bake this date and nut bread and she baked it in a can to make do because we couldn't find a loaf pan where we were living and she stuffed all the batter into two cans or one big can and when it came out it came out in a cylinder shape and she would take it out of the soup can and she would uh, gingerly cut it and slice it into circles and the circles would go in a plate in a circle and then the center she would fill it with either candies or small cookies that she made or um, she loved the fact at Christmas time there was ribbon candy which is old-fashioned. In Boston we had this cast iron cook stove and she had to f go downstairs get the coal and fire it up with the coal and I remember her family, her relative and her mother saying that she would turn out like lemon meringue pies, like no tomorrow apple pies. So she did love baking. But when, when we were in Florida, everything changed. Her lifestyle changed drastically, so we couldn't afford to do so much baking and, and the cost of food and stuff. So. The date nut cake to me was not only nutritious, but it was, um, and filling, it was, uh, she baked it with the ingenuity of putting it in a soup can, and that just fascinated me. My mother's name was Ida, I-D-A. Her maiden name was Italian, Battista, and her married name was Buron, which is uh, French. My father was French. We were triplets, so there was two identical boys, uh, Douglas and Ralph. And when we were five, we were driving from Boston to Miami, Florida, where my father was promised a job. And uh, a job didn't exist when we finally arrived, so we were shuffled around in motels until we couldn't afford to pay for the motels and then um, my mother finally found a job and she was able to rent a small, um, very small wooden type cottage. When she did find a job as a seamstress, she um, she did very well. Being that my mother worked so much, I, I took over cooking and baking, uh, and I liked it. And then when my, in 1967, um, my two brothers got fed up of just going to college and not having money to date or join a, have a car to drive to go on dates. And so they both joined the Navy. and. Uh, one, after boot camp, one went to California base uh, and stayed in the, on board in the Navy and the other was sent to um, one year in Vietnam. So I got the notion to, hey, you know, my brothers love the cake, the date nut cake and our bread. I said, hey mom, what if I send this? She said, well, there might be a problem getting it to Vietnam where he was. By the time he got the one can, um, he said, I, I managed to get a piece because everybody else dug their fingers in it and, and you know, you had to share. I was able to, with CHC, get a grant and go to Vimy in France. But before that, Fort York was doing a whole entourage of uh, Great War recipes. And so I looked in uh, quite a few cookbooks that I had in an American cookbook from Maine uh, Church, somewhere in Maine, there was Canada's war cake. And it was basically the same cake. In, in studying World War I, there's the soup can. So I studied that and when I went to France, that's what I did. I demonstrated and the kids, the, these were high school kids. I stuffed the can of war cake into two handmade wool socks 
and wrapped it in, in brown paper, tea towel and brown paper, and put the GI's uh, address where, where he was in the trenches. And so he had a can that he could reheat a stew in over his little fire going or his mess tin. And he had a cake in the can and he had two extra pair of socks. Some of them were in tears.